Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today I bring you a review for the long-awaited Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Galactic Odyssey Collection, Micron Micromasters. This is the second-to-last release in the Amazon-exclusive Galactic Odyssey Collection. And, you know, just like... And just like the other entries in that collection, it focuses on a specific planet within the Transformers universe. In this case, the planet Micron, which is generally associated with Minicons, but because we don't have Minicons in the current toy line, they're using Micromasters instead, which are you know, very similar. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at the packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll look at everything that comes inside. We'll see the instructions, and then we'll see our MicroMasters themselves in both their vehicle and robot modes. I'll be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So they come in the same mailer box style packaging that the Glad Goddessy toys and the Flex toys all do. However, this is significantly smaller and thinner than any other Glad Goddessy releases, because just little toys inside. But you get the same cool little hex grid pattern here. You get the symbol for Micron, which just shows like a little tiny transformer in front of what appears to be Optimus Prime's head. Uh, you get, you know, the name Micron here on the top. You get your label that shows the name of the set. Wrap around art, logo, legal stuff, more legal stuff. And a little bit more of a wrap around since it's so thin. So, yeah, nothing too exciting, but. I will give them, you know, props for making a plain cardboard box look interesting. And now that the label's cut, let's open this up. Oh, it's getting kind of stuck on itself here. All right, so we get that same very cool inner lining that shows off the different planets in the collection in a full print. It's funny that, like, the inside of the box gets way more work than the outside, but yeah, whatever. Here we get our tray with our six little MicroMasters. And, you know, just like the other Galactic Odyssey toys, they're all pre-existing molds. And they've just been, you know, recolored and redone as new characters. So very cool. And I will say, even though these guys aren't Minicons proper, their color schemes really harken back to that very bright, very cartoony look of, like, the old Transformers Armada Minicons. So I like it. Got the instruction book here. Our garbage paper. I don't know why they put that in there. They know we're just going to throw it away. All right, so you get our six guys here on the front. You get the Micron MicroMasters little name here. You get a split Autobot Decepticon symbol because they cover both factions. Okay, and then we get our transformations along with names for our guys. So we get Road Burner, turns into half of a uh, fire truck type leg vehicle. Now we're here, we got Fire Guard, who forms the other half. Does it show them combined together? I don't know if it does. Oh yeah, it does on the back. Okay. Let's not skip ahead then, folks. All right, then we get Decepticon Runner, who... Well, we'll, we'll get to him. I want to talk about him. You get Sting Racer, Windstorm, and then Motorhead. All their transformations. Then on the back, we get our weapon mode combinations here for our little car guys. Same thing there. And then this is the combined vehicle mode, which you basically just flip upside down to form like a bazooka. So, a lot going on here. Then lastly, of course, we get our planet tech spec card. These are cool. Never thought we'd get a you know, tech spec for a whole planet. Also, here's the little micron symbol again. Very neat. All right, so here's the front of it. It's got the name of the planet in both English and Ancient Autobot. Symbol, a picture of the planet as it appears on the galactic map. Galactic Odyssey collection written out here. Flip this over. And again, the tech specs read left to right instead of down. So it's a fortress system. Uh, terrain, cities, natural water resources, lush greenery. So it seems very Earth-like. Uh, sector, Outer Rim 1, Coordinates, Zone 2, District, it looks like negative 52 and 13. Aspect 4, Known Hazards, Magma Covered Moon holds a maximum security prison. That's cool. The uh, primary life forms, Minicons, a race of small Cybertronian colonists. 
So they actually acknowledge that minicons exist here, though what we get, as far as I know, aren't supposed to be minicons. Uh, resource prototype plasma energy generators that power the planet. That's cool. And then key data, advanced military defense system made up of interlocking megacities, most secure planet in the universe. That's really neat. It's definitely some new flavor to the whole Micron spin. It's one of the least explored planets that have you know existed in the universe so far. Okay, now we got our guys out of the packaging, all in their vehicle modes lined up. And going from left to right, we get Road Burner, Fire Guard, Runner, Motorhead, Sting Racer, and Windstorm. As we saw, these two are part of a combiner team. Runner and Motorhead are part of the Racetrack Patrol, joining their teammates that were released in a standard Earthrise wave. And then our last two, our newcomers, Sting Racer and Windstorm, are references to the Mask franchise. So we're gonna go more in depth on each one of these. And I guess we'll start taking it from the left. So our two yellow firefighters here are pretty much a reimagining of the classic G1 uh, MicroMaster combiner team called the Metro Squad. Roadburner is a returning veteran, however, Fireguard is a new character. Uh, originally, Roadburner was paired with an Autobot named Wheelblaze, who would form the front of their fire engine. But Wheelblaze was released in the previous Toyland Siege as a standalone fire truck MicroMaster. So rather than just re-release him as, you know, a combining version, they just added a new member who just happens to look a lot like Wheelblaze. So, yeah, Fireguard pretty much just exists because the Wheelblaze name was already taken. Uh, if you want to see him, this is the Siege Wheelblaze. You can see very similar color scheme, mostly yellow and white. And he's got a, a full-on ladder. Like, he is a standalone fire truck. So, yeah, he's kind of been shunted out of the club, and I don't know, I... I'm not super crazy about redoing characters like immediately in the next toy line. I feel like in this case though, that would have been preferable to just making up a new character and kind of disrupting the whole team dynamic. They could have easily like head that as just Wheelblaze getting a combiner type upgrade later down the road, you know, after being just a standalone guy. So I don't know. Um, it is what it is, that's the path they went with, and it's not the end of the world. I mean, how many people actually remember who the heck Wheelblaze and Roadburner are? They're not the most well-known characters. So yeah, that's what's going on there. Kind of got a stand-in a la the uh, early Combiner Wars stuff, right? Like Alpha Bravo and Off-Road. And now these two, despite being billed as combining into a fire truck, are really just straight read echoes of the Decepticon Battle Squad from earlier in Earthrise, and actually from Siege, too. They got released in both lines. Uh, so here's those guys. And you can see no molding difference at all, just straight read echoes. Uh, honestly, the Battle Squad overall just has the much better paint details. They got a lot of like extra silver and dark blue and stuff, a lot of black and gray. These guys are a little more sparse on the coloring. And the original toys, you know, they turn into some sort of like a uh, missile carrier type truck, or it's not a missile, but like a cannon. I don't know. Some sort of armed vehicle. And they didn't change anything about this for the release, so I guess that's supposed to be like, I don't know, a water hose or something. Uh, they didn't put that much thought into it, so <laughs> I don't think we need to either. But being read echoes of the Battle Squad, they share their combining ability. So it works the same way, right? You flip the little peg down, plug them in. Boom. Big old armed vehicle. Armed armored vehicle. And a uh, fire truck. So yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Not the most high effort uh, repurposing of a mold, but you know, it, it's something. It's better than not getting them at all, I guess. And I'll bring Wheelblaze back in just so you can see how tiny of a fire truck he creates next to these guys. So yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this. Had a lot of potential, better than nothing, but could have been a lot more. 
Here's a quick shot of Earthrise Sunstreaker wielding these guys in their weapon mode, which is really just the vehicle mode turned upside down. I mean, like, no transformation required. You just turn it upside down, use the handle. And it's supposed to be some sort of like a bazooka looking thing. Um, I mean, honestly, it's less silly looking than some of the other weapon modes, despite how lazy it is. At least looks kind of like something instead of a, you know, two car pileup. So it is what it is. And I think he works really well with Sunstreaker, who's mostly yellow himself. All right, focusing on our robot modes, we get Fire Guard and Road Burner. And they get a bit more color in these modes than they do in the vehicle mode, especially Fire Guard here. It's got this new blue and green that doesn't really show up in his vehicle mode. Uh, Road Burner, he just gets more of the gray, but at least it's broken up a bit. And they look pretty good together. They look like a pretty well-coordinated little duo. Of course, we could always make this a trio. Putting the OG back in here, or wheel blaze. And one thing you'll notice is that uh, Fireguard's colors are more similar to wheel blazes. And that seems to be intentional. I, I He pretty much is wheel blaze in all but name. So... Again, to me, it just seems odd. I kind of would prefer it if they just updated Real Blaze, but... Oh, well, at least now we have a new official fictional character. So that's one way to look at it. You can also pop him out of there and get a look at their mold mates and their robot modes. So here's our battle squad. Who I still think have the superior colors. I think out of all the different MicroMaster uh, two-packs that they've released... I think the Battle Squad just has the coolest colors by far. <laughs> I've never changed my mind on that. They just look so cool. So yeah, while I don't think that our Metro Squad is nearly as cool looking, they're still fine for what they are. They're just more MicroMasters. Um, I kind of treat this new Galactic Odyssey set as like a smaller version of the MicroMaster pack we got in Siege. Just a way to fill out your ranks because they were pretty lacking during Earthrise. All right, now we get the Racetrack Patrol with the rest of the Racetrack Patrol. So, uh, this multi-pack allows for the first, and as far as we know, only completion of a four-bot MicroMaster team. Right, Earthrise kind of rubs some people the wrong way because they released two bot teams of classically four-bot groups. So, you know, we were left hanging in most cases. But at least, as far as the racetrack guys are concerned, we finally get to complete them in some fashion. So we get our two new characters, Runner and Motorhead, along with their existing teammates, Roller Force and Groundhog. And you can see clearly that Runner is a re-echo of Roller Force, whereas Motorhead is a re-echo of Groundhog. Now, something that's really interesting. The original team was comprised of four separate molds but two different color palettes between them. So originally, these two had unique molds, but were gang molded, which meant they shared the same uh, plastic colors, in their case, like a purple and blue. And then these two were the same way, unique looking, but with the same colors. In their case, it was yellow and purple, like a dark purple. Now you can see that's no longer the case. So I guess in a way to differentiate them, since they are recycling the molds, they opted not to basically gang color them. So Runner here gets to be dark blue with like a pinkish color. And uh, Motorhead gets to be yellow with purple like his classic colors. Whereas Roller Force is more of a fuchsia with a light blue. And then this guy is mostly dark blue with some yellow accents. So, I don't know. Again, like... Like the Metro Squad, it's not ideal. This is, you know, a subline of Reed Echoes and Retools, so naturally, you're not just going to be getting a ton of new molds out of this. Not going to get any new molds, really. So, again, better than not completing the team. Still not as good as if they had just released the MicroMasters as four packs from the get-go. Um, I do complain about the price of these things a lot, and... I've always thought that $10 for two MicroMasters is just absurd. It's so much money for what are essentially mini cons. You remember how much like mini con 
like three packs would cost, well, like seven bucks or three pack. Now it's $10 for a two pack. You know, it's, it's not ideal. Am I happy it exists? Yes. Am I bitter about how it exists? Also, yes. But that's enough griping out of me for now. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, now we move on to their weapon mode, which I affectionately refer to as a two-car pileup. And I'm having them be wielded by the Decepticon Barricade. Now, why Barricade, do you ask? Well, for those not in the know, Runner here was originally known in the G1 toy line as Barricade. He is the original Generation 1 Barricade. And then, thanks to the live-action movies, the name became much more commonly associated with a full-size police car Decepticon. So, that character got made into his own G1 character, leaving this guy kind of out in the dust. So, they kind of pulled a whole fire guard and wheel blaze thing where they needed a new name for this toy if they were going to release the whole racetrack patrol. And luckily, he had a spare name sitting around, because in the Dreamwave comics, during their MicroMaster story arc... There was a little bot, a little MicroMaster named Runner, who would go on to achieve great things in the Decepticon cause and take on the moniker Barricade. So there's actually precedent for him being named Runner. So I think it's a really clever and really, you know, lore-heavy way of dealing with this name discrepancy. So I just think it's cool seeing Barricade wielding Barricade, and they're not the same character. I had always wondered how they envisioned that. I had thought, honestly, that, like... MicroMaster Barricade would become Cop Barricade or vice versa through some storyline. But I guess they're just going to keep them as two separate characters and just keep the, you know, Barricade name to the much more recognizable and, by extension, much more marketable appearance. And that's fine. Um, the weapon mode, of course, is just total trash. <laughs> like I said, two-car pileup, mangled, pain, just, it's not good. But... If you've followed my reviews, you know I'm really not a fan of these weapon modes for the most part. All right, now to see our racetrack patrol in their robot modes. Again, we got our new guys on the left, the older team members on the right. And again, you can see no remolding, you know, nothing different in the tooling, just straight redecos. Uh, luckily, the paint layout is quite different between them, so that helps break things up. You get different paint apps on the chest between Runner and Roller Force. And then you can see with Motorhead, they opt to paint the legs, whereas on Roadhog, they just left them blue plastic. So there are some subtle differences. Again, nothing crazy, but it does help give somewhat of an illusion that they're different characters and not just, I don't know, the same guys with a new paint job. Okay, and then our final pairing out of this set are the mask-inspired new MicroMaster characters, Windstorm and Stingracer. And to be specific as to their inspirations, Windstorm is based off of the mask-aligned vehicle, with, you know, mask being the good guys, uh, Hurricane. So, you know, Hurricane, Windstorm, makes sense. And then Stingracer is based off of a Venom, or bad guy line vehicle, called Stinger. So, Stinger, Stingracer... I don't know why they didn't just use the original names. Maybe they didn't have the copyright for them, though we did just have a Stinger Transformers character in the live action series not long ago, but I don't know. Don't know the details. Uh, but these two, they're pretty neat. Uh, very nice, classic car design, you know, old Roadster type cars. Uh, especially, I really love Hurricane's paint job. That, like, sea green, that's a color you really don't see in vehicles anymore. And then he's got the cool flame decals. Uh, Stingracer is a little more plain, nothing special. He does have this kind of pinkish, like faded, I don't know, striping going on that you can barely make out, but it is there. So they're really cool in their own right, and they are direct read echoes of the Hot Rod MicroMaster Patrol. And that had comprised of Trip Up and Daddy O. So obviously, Stingracer is a read echo of Trip Up. Windstorm's a redeco of daddy -O. And if you don't recognize the name daddy -O, it's a uh, new copyright-friendly name for Big Daddy, which was the original G1 character's name. Uh, so yeah, they're not teammates of these two, right? These are part of that aforementioned 
four pack that got split in half. Uh, so unfortunately, the Hot Rod Patrol just doesn't seem to be getting complete anytime soon. But I will say that I really do like the new paint jobs. In fact, I pretty much prefer them over the original. Um, especially with Windstorm. I, I just think he looks really cool. I mean, Big Daddy or Daddy-O is cool in his own right, but this to me is just way cooler. I mean, I grew up in a beach community, so the colors just kind of work for me. These two are a little closer. Uh, they each kind of do their own thing pretty well. I don't know, it's a toss up. Let's just say they're all good. They're all pretty nice looking and they make really good looking vehicles. And to show off our final traffic accident, I mean weapon mode, we get the mercenary bug bite. Felt bug bite was appropriate because this is a cross-factional weapon mode, right? You got an Autobot Decepticon. This pairing wouldn't happen in fiction, except under the most, you know, extreme circumstances. But I figure, you know, why not get a cross-factional type character? Plus, another reference character, right? Bug Bite's a Gobot. These are mask guys. All sorts of uh, multi-franchise fun going on here. So yeah, these two, um, probably the worst looking out of the three weapon modes. It just, they look like they're just taking a nap on each other. It, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd take the racetrack weapon mode over this one. This one's just silly, but I guess it does have kind of the most firepower. Right? It's got four whole full-size barrels on it, so I don't know. Maybe it's goofy looking, but it's the strongest one. Yeah, I don't know. Take it or leave it. I typically ignore the weapon modes, and I think most people are better off doing that. And now our mask vehicles get something they've never had before, robot modes. Right? Mask was all about transforming vehicles, but they didn't actually turn into robots, they just had battle modes. So this is a whole new thing for these two. Uh, unfortunately, the robot modes they inherit are, in my opinion, probably like the weakest of all the Micromasters released in Warp Cybertron. Uh, they're just, they're very clunky, they got these really high shoulders, and they have some severe balancing issues because they're very top and back heavy and have very little support in the backs of their feet. Specifically, the trip up mold. So these two, you can see they're kind of leaning on their teammates because if I didn't have them leaning, they'd just be falling over right now. <laughs> That's it, like no amount of, you know, messing around with them can really fix it. And the biggest cause of that is the way their hips are molded and their, their legs and everything, their legs don't really bend forward beyond this point right here. They hit kind of like a friction stop, a really hard one. Now you can force them forward, but only too much. You know what I mean? Kind of like snap forward rather than just, you know, slowly move. So then they're just bending over and still falling over. Like it, it's a really bad mold family. And that is such a shame. <laughs> like these two are easily the weakest link in the set. Now their vehicle modes again, fantastic looking super cool muscle cars i'd recommend just leave them in vehicle mode you'll get a lot more out of them that way because this robot mode it's just atrocious it really is uh you know trip up and daddy are probably my least favorite in all of earth rise and even uh you know siege before that and these two just continue that trend of just being really terrible robots like as bad as their weapon mode is at least that's stable you know <laughs> at least that doesn't fall over um, so yeah, uh, if I had to pick a weak link for this whole set, it's definitely these two, and only because the robot modes are just so incompetently done. Okay, and now we'll wrap up this review with a group shot of all six robot modes. So, at face value, it's just a neat little set. It's, think of it as a MicroMaster booster pack. It's really what it is, just a way to flesh out your ranks, Similar to the Target exclusive one from Siege, though quite a bit smaller, being a six pack instead of a 10 pack. Uh, so yeah, I mean, for what it is, it's fine. Now, as part of a Galactic Odyssey set, I think it's, you know, another weak link in a series of fairly weak links. Again, really not sharing a theme with the planet. I mean, yeah, sure, they're small like mini cons, but if they really wanted to do it justice, they would have done MicroMasters up as Minicon characters. I think that's really the way they should have gone. Um, 
plus sides is you get to complete the racetrack patrol even if it is kind of a uh, half-baked and you do get another MicroMaster combiner team out of it and if you like mask you get a mask reference however like I said with those guys very weak robot modes there I mean I would have picked any I, like I wish they would have gone and reused some siege molds or something because these are really terrible robot modes they're just bad my least favorite by far uh, so you know maybe I'm I'm probably being a little harsh on this set but you know we're four out of five in now with the Botropolis one arriving you know currently uh, <laughs> and I've just overall been very disappointed with the collection the only ones I really liked were the Ratchet and uh, Lifeline and then the upcoming one for Botropolis everything in between has been honestly a dud in my eyes so yeah um, buy this if you want more MicroMasters but don't expect to be blown away and don't expect these two to stand up on their own because they probably won't and that's really all there is to say about this so, obviously, I'm not entirely thrilled about this pack, but what do you all think? Am I being unnecessarily harsh on this? Do you find this to be a very cool little MicroMaster pack, or do you agree that this is just kind of a, I don't know, a filler and doesn't really accomplish much of anything? I'd love to hear all of your feedback in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the Transformers Earthrise Galactic Odyssey Micron MicroMaster set. And with all that said, I will see you next time.